Hey everyone, I'm here with Pastor Matt. We are looking at Luke 15 this week. So this is a pretty well-known passage uh, where Jesus is talking about three different parables, all pretty similar, but with some key differences. Yeah, and you know, uh, what's, what's interesting about parables, Jesus is like a master storyteller. <laughs> uh, and what I love about parables is, is parables like literally, you don't have to search too deep to find out like the meaning of it. Yeah. And we literally see that with this story. And uh, you know, because we have heard it before. I'm going to kind of just paraphrase mm -hmm. this, this this story that Jesus tells. He's in a group uh, with with you know the the religious leaders, but he's also with a group of of you know, I guess sinners. Um, and he he tells this story of uh, three lost things. First, he starts with sheep, which would have been something that they totally understood uh, in that time. And so he's he's telling this story of uh, these 99 sheep that are with the with, they're with the shepherd, but this one sheep is lost. And he tells them like, hey. Would that the shepherd not go find the one mm -hmm. that, that you know he would leave the ninety nine to go find the one? And we hear that quite often. Yeah. Uh, and then the second story actually moves into um, you know this this woman who uh, she loses a coin. So now we've gone from a hundred. Now we're going down to ten. She loses mm -hmm. one. There's nine coins that are found, mm -hmm. but there's one coin that's missing. And yeah. what I find funny about this is is that you know I'm gonna be honest with you. If it's like a nickel, like I'm not looking for that. <laughs> maybe yeah. a quarter. Maybe a quarter. Uh, but the reality is is that that's not what this is. It's it's it would mm -hmm. be more like like 150 dollars maybe yeah. even I, even more like it'd be right. it would be it's actually a day and a half's wage is what it is and so this is think about that like if i lost like my kids if they lose five dollars they're like searching everywhere right you know but if you lost a hundred dollars would mm -hmm. you not go look for it? and that's what that's what exactly what happens mm -hmm. here she search, searches everywhere uh that she can she gets on her knees she's i, I just she I just, burns the lamp oh that she just does too? Yeah. she just does whatever she can yeah. to find this because it's valuable yeah and you know then the last one um actually is uh what we call the prodigal son mm -hmm. and a lot of people believe this Malia. this is what's funny is a lot of people go well the prodigal that that just means lost son and, and it actually doesn't um prodigal actually is is like reckless spending so like mm. the, he would the, the son was actually reckless with this inheritance and so jesus tells right. the story of this inheritance that this dad has for his son but then what happens is the son wants it early basically he tells your dad is that you're dead to me um give me my money i want to go mm -hmm. and he goes and he does whatever he, he spends it on just yeah. frivolous things he's he's very uh doing doing things very wrong mm -hmm. uh, in the way he should and um from that he finds himself actually in a pig pen comes up with a speech uh, that he's going to tell his dad. He goes back to his father. Uh, the father sees him from a far way out, which I just, this just this, this picture that Jesus is painting is just amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and we see that this, this father runs to the son, right. um, embraces him and then throws a party for him. Right. Like this son who was lost is now found. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we also see this other character though in this story. Uh, and that is the brother and the brother who's been there the whole time, the brother who's done everything right. Mm -hmm. He gets frustrated. He's like, I never left, but yeah. like, you've never done this for me. Um, and, and you know, in that the father really helps the son understand like, right. Hey, this, this son of this brother of yours was lost, yeah. but he's found. He's he, here. He's he, home. And he says, "You're with me all the time." You're with yeah. me all the time. And so, you know, and so in that, that's you know, this this story really depicts a lost and found. And here's what's mm -hmm. funny is, is that you know, when you and I started talking about this, I've always looked at this story from the perspective of the lost yeah. because you know, for me, that was my story. Like this, this mm -hmm. is my story. Like the the Savior saw me from a long way off and ran after me mm -hmm. because I was coming home. And so I've never seen it from a different perspective. Uh, and you know, and what we see in that is is that we just know that people have a lot of different perspectives when it comes to yeah. uh, their testimony, what they what God saved them from. Right. Um, and you know, that's that's something that we kind of talked about. Right. Because I, for me, I grew up in church. I accepted uh, Christ as my Savior early on. So when I read uh, parables like this, I kind of put myself in a different perspective. So I'm kind of looking at it from you know the original audience of the pharisees i'm looking at it from the people who are like wait why are we celebrating the younger son he he went out and he messed up um so it's just amazing that we can ha like find so much like depth in these parables um and look at the context and um i think it's interesting also if we're considering these parables from a found perspective we um are we consider ourselves found we are saved and so what do we do with these parables and i think it's cool because when we look at the three different parables the first two the sheep and the coin uh you know the seeker they go out to find uh, the first one you know the sheep they're not considered very smart 
we don't like to be considered uh, not very smart, but you know, if we're following the way of the world, we find ourselves far from God and we need someone to come after us. Right. Um, and then the second one, the lost coin, it's not cognizant, it's not conscious, it's not aware of its lost nature. Um, and again, you, you need someone to go and find that. And in the last one, we see that, you know, the father was just there to receive him. He had to make that decision to come back. And I think it's interesting to put ourselves um, in, in these parables as someone who is called to be like Jesus and to be the picture of Jesus to unsaved uh, unbelievers, you know, yeah. like this. And so I think it's a good question to ask is like, what? how can we take these parables and consider these different places that unbelievers may be in so that we can live out our calling, um, you know, as to, to make more disciples, to represent yeah. Jesus to unbelievers, so. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, think that's, I think that's a great, a great question. Um, you know, another thing that I see in this story, though, is is the true value yeah. in in God's people. Right. You know, the true value. And here's the thing: is that lost things have value. Like what I find funny, you know, and interesting about this story about the lost coin is is that just because the coin's lost, it didn't lose its value. Right. Um, yeah. Just because the sheep is lost, it mm -hmm. didn't lose its value. This it was so valuable that it he, the, the shepherd left ninety nine. Yeah. Um, it's so important that she left the nine other coins mm -hmm. to find the one. Mm -hmm. But what what really hit me was is is you know value is not in a circumstance, and value is not yeah. in what we see things. Right. And it's what like, I mean by that is this: is that like the last time we see the son before he he goes back to the father with mm -hmm. his speech that he's going to give, is uh, he's in a pig pen. Right. He's eating with the pigs, and my guess is, uh, I'm not really a farmer, but I will tell you this, I know pig pen probably doesn't smell very nice, <laughs> uh, but it doesn't say that he goes and he washes up and gets himself clean and mm -hmm. ready to go. It just says yeah. that he makes his way back to the father. That's true. So I'm guessing when this when the father comes and hugs him, he's probably smelling something that's <laughs> a little nasty. And what does he say? He says, hey, like, I've been wait. I've been waiting for this. I'm, mm -hmm. He hugs him. He gets. Hey, let's get. Let's get you. Let's get you cleaned up, right. and let's throw a party for you. And I, mm -hmm. I just uh, what that shows me is it shows we can come to Jesus, beat up, yeah. smelling gross, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the truth: is that we're not too far gone right. for us to come back to the Savior. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that's what Jesus is saying in this. In this. So my question would be for people: is you know, what is the value we see in people? Yeah. How do, how can we show people? their value, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we're, we're not Jesus, right. but we're called to be like him. Yes. So how can we do that as well? Yeah, and it, if we look at the perspective of the other son, so you kind of talked about the son that went away, the prodigal son, let's look at the son that stayed. And to me, this is where I find uh, like some more depth in the story because, uh, you know, the Pharisees are the ones who brought up like, hey, like he he's eating with sinners, yeah. but that's the beauty of the story. And we, we say in the series, you know, he invites everyone to the table. And and um, I think it's it's crazy to think that believers can get to this bitter place because they see this undeserved mercy from God. They're like, okay, he gets to go and mess up and do whatever he wants, and he's he's welcome back, to, welcome back so easily. Like, and it's it's easy to feel bitterness creep in, but we need to realize that we are undeserving of that right. mercy as well. And I think it 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 means so much when we recognize that reality. And also that the older son, he's not just he's not just bitter, but he also is envious. He's envious of those those experiences that the younger brother had. He's like, hey, I don't even get to party with my friends and I'm here with you all the time. But I think we need to shift our perspective at that time because that's a hard issue there that, you know, we're not content where we are. We're looking to the world for like what we think we need instead of with Jesus. And so that's why I think it's so meaningful when the father says, hey, you're with me all the time because that means something. That means you're he's with him. He's in his presence he's learning from him he is experiencing his mercy day by day right. and i think that as christians if we're viewing it from the older brother's perspective we can consider you know are are we better are we envious right. in any way is there anything that we need to do to shift our perspective right. so yeah. i love that well i love that part too you know it, it just also shows the love of a father yeah um because again they're throwing a party for the younger brother who was lost mm -hmm. and he hears about his older son having mm -hmm. an issue right and he leaves the party yeah to yeah. come and be by his son's side right. to help him understand. Mm -hmm. That's just the love of our father. And, yeah. and that's what Jesus is doing. He's trying to show these religious leaders, hey, mm -hmm. I came for you too. Yeah. And here's the reality. Jesus came for us all. Mm -hmm. And the gospel of Luke is for everyone. Yeah. Always. So we got some questions for the people. Yes. Yeah. So first of all, um, as we talk about these three different parables, do you find yourself, your own testimony, your faith journey mirroring those? And if so, 
it, do you feel the conviction to share them? Because yeah. there is power in our testimonies. So we would encourage um, for you and your groups, if you do relate to those stories, share them. Be an encouragement to your group. So that's the first one. Uh, the next one we see is how do we find value in the people around us? How do we value them as Jesus values them? Yeah. And to go along with that, what are we willing to do to show that value? Um, because as we see in these parables, work is put into finding these lost things. And so what are we willing to do in our own lives? And you can get as specific as you want with that in yeah. your discussion. Well, I think I think the thing that we can ask there as well to, mm -hmm. to each other is, what are some specific things yeah. that we can do, maybe even as a group, that we could do mm -hmm. to jump in and go, you know what, hey, I'm gonna jump. Maybe it's even part of this Compassion Week that we're gonna be be doing. And it, what, what can we do as a group to show compassion, mm -hmm. to show value for people? Uh, and, and maybe in your group, just talk about some specific things that you could do as a group, as, as individuals, that you could do to really show that, uh, that value for people. Right. Yeah, and one that we asked before, but um, I'll, I'll repeat again, is how can we take into consideration the different types of people represented in these parables? How can we consider the experiences and uh, where these people are at so we can meet them where we, they are, so we can be that extension of Jesus as we're called to? As we know, we don't control anyone's faith. We don't control anyone's salvation. Uh, it says the only way is through Jesus. But what can we do to put them in a place to know Jesus, to see Jesus through our actions? And the last one would be, if we find ourselves in a place of envy or bitterness, how can we reset our focus to the blessings that we have of being faithful and staying in the presence of Jesus instead of focusing on our earthly desires? Yeah. So that was our last question. So feel free to discuss them in your groups. Thanks for watching.